What's up everyone, today we're going to take a look at the Star Wars Black Series 6 inch action figure of Cat Bane when he appeared on the planet Braca on the Bad Batch Disney Plus TV show. Here's a quick look at the box. On top we have the usual window to let the light in. On the bottom of the box, some more product information. And down to the side, we have artwork of Cat Bane tipping his hat with his pistol. Onto the back of the box. A close-up of that same artwork, description of Cat Bane over here, more product information at the bottom, and of course he's also number 12 in the Bad Batch series. Moving on to that last side of the box, we have that other side of the window. So let's go ahead and get this guy open. Out of the packaging, he's on the plastic tray, and he's got his two blaster pistols by his side. He comes with his two trademark blaster pistols and they are exactly the same sculpt. The new pistols are exactly the same sculpt as the ones that came with the previous release of Cad Bane. There's no real reason to change the sculpt of his pistols because he's been using them for a long time. These pistols also come with a nice silver paint finish, cool detail of the scope on top as well as the skinny barrel that's painted in black. And there's also some brown paint on the grip of the pistol. The figure is sculpted with trigger grips on both of his hands, so of course he holds both pistols just fine. He also comes with holsters on his side that you can conveniently store those blasters in, so these hold the pistols pretty well as well. Looking at his overall sculpt, I am pleasantly surprised to find that he's made of a lot of new parts. The only things that are reused from the previous Cat Bane are his respirator, his forearms and his hands, the two hip pieces, as well as his feet. Everything else is a brand new sculpt. The new figure is also missing that sort of paint dry brushing effect that we see on the older figure. That dry brushing effect is seen on top of his hat, on the front of his torso as well as his legs. However, that's not so much of a downside because the new figure has a lot more colors in the different plastics and paints all over the figure. So despite not having that dry brushing effect, the new figure still looks interesting to look at. Zooming into that head sculpt and you can see that he's got a brown hat and it's got some nice silver paint detail at the top. It looks like a couple of armor plates in order to protect his head. Just like the previous release of Cad Bane, that hat also comes off, revealing his head sculpt and he looks like he's wearing some sort of suit. The head itself is cast in a dark green plastic, a dark grey metallic paint on the top of his head for this armor plate as well that also has some sculpting detail on it. Moving back to the front of that head sculpt and there is a light blue paint for most of his face. And since this is an older version of Cad Bane, he's also got really nice sculpting for the lines to show his age and his face. A darker blue paint wash is also applied onto his head sculpt and that really brings out all those lines, making him look more mature and grizzled. I like how his mouth is sculpted as well, with a slanted expression, looking really mean and what he's probably missing is also that toothpick. His eyes are sculpted narrow into slits with sharp applications of red paint for them. His respirator attaches to the sides of his cheeks and this respirator is given a nice silver finish and some sculpted detail on the back as well. And likewise, the respirator also comes off. So is this really nice attention to detail on the head sculpt of this figure that really makes it quite impressive. So here's a quick side-by-side -side of the two figures' head sculpts. And you can see that the new figure is definitely having a much more mature sculpt on his face. And also having his lips pursed together as compared to the sneering expression on the first figure. And you can see that the brim of his hat is smaller compared to the old one in this instance. I like how both figures still capture that same meanness in his expression. Once again showing that he's still a sinister, merciless bounty hunter. And we move on to his neck and his torso. His neck is also cast in that same dark green plastic with brown paint for his high collar. His torso is a brown plastic below with a metallic looking plastic armor plate attached on top. It's got nice sculpted details, couple of buttons down the middle as well as paneling on the sides. Strangely, even though this figure is full of detail, I find that his torso is the most lackluster part of him because there doesn't appear to be any paint applications. And despite the sculpted detail on this metallic looking plastic chest plate, I keep thinking that paint applications would have definitely brought more of the sculpting and panel detail out. Both his arms have different armor plates on them. 
the shoulder armor on both arms do articulate up and down so that you can move them out of the way while you pose his arms. His left shoulder armor is a small piece and that's attached by pegs onto his shoulder. Most of his arm is cast in a dark grey plastic. Silver paint applications for the armor plate on his bicep. There are black tubes extending from his bicep into his forearm gauntlets, which are also painted in uh, the metallic silver paint. Red paint for a couple of buttons on his gauntlet as well, so that's a nice touch. And now his hands are just cast in a dark grey plastic. So he now has full gloves as compared to the finger gloves on the previous figure. And now we move on to the back of the figure. We see that the chest armor plate extends all the way to the top part of his back, while the rest of his back is just a plain brown plastic. Now on his right arm, we have that larger shoulder armor, some cool detail sculpted on the top of it, and we see the same paint and sculpt detail, like the tubes and the forearm gauntlets on his right arm as compared to his left arm. His crush piece is cast in a dark grey plastic, and on top of that we have a dark brown plastic belt assembly that looks like it's made from a couple of things. First there are two belts of bullets. Very nice and sharp paint detail for the silver on the top as well as the bottom. So they really look like shiny bullet cartridges, all attached to his belt. I like the darker silver paint finish for the buckles on his belt as well. So all this detail really makes his belt pop. We see more of that same paint detail for his bullet belts all the way down to the back. And on the sides, those brown holsters are also sculpted with a little bit of detail, like the button on the middle. The sharp silver paint applications for those bullets are also carried on all the way around the belt, so that's really nice work from Hasbro. On his upper legs, they are just cast in a dark grey plastic. There's some sculpted detail to show the wrinkling in the fabric of his pants. Down to his lower legs, they are mostly cast in an army green plastic, silver paint for his knee pads, as well as a cool sculpted detail as well. On the sides of his calves, he's also got brown paint for his boots, and now he also looks like he's got new versions of thrusters on the sides of his boots. These thrusters also have a dark silver paint finish on them, so that makes the thrusters look really interesting and they also articulate to have him blasting off and flying in different directions. And while his feet are also reused, it's also nice to point out that he's got sculpted detail on the soles of his boots as well. So despite being the same character, I will say that the new figure has a lot of interesting paint and sculpt details that makes him distinctly different from the previous figure. And this also captures the evolution of the character as he matures over the Star Wars stories. And of course, if you wanted to, you could also do the head swaps between the characters and the hats do work with both figures as well. Looking at his articulation, he's got two ball joints at the bottom as well as the top of his neck. So that means you can spin his head all the way around. The two ball joints also give him quite a good range sideways tilting. He can look down that far as well as up quite a good bit. Butterfly joints at the shoulders so he can pull his arms backwards about that much but that's not incredible range forward so just that little bit forward butterfly joints are especially useful for characters who are more expressive with their arms and hands so cat bay definitely is one of them with his dual wielding pistols he's got a swivel hinge at the bicep so his arms go all the way around as well as coming out quite far there's a swivel just above the elbow and that would give you some sort of bicep swivel. However, that may not be able to swivel all the way around because of how the tubes are connected, still letting you get decent range outward as well as inward. And of course, he's also got a single hinged elbow, and that gives you just slightly beyond a 90 degree bend. He's got a swivel hinge at the wrist that goes 360, as well as articulating down and up, which is useful for trigger hands. He's got no joints in the middle of his torso, but he's got a ball joint at his waist, so you can spin him all the way around, getting a little bit of that sideways tilt as well. There's very minimal forward bend in that ball joint, but he appears to have quite good range backwards. So the forward bend in that waist is a little disappointing. 
He's got ball joints at his hips that give you quite a decent sideways split. There's also no problems forward and backward. There's an upper thigh swivel that goes 360. Also another swivel just above his knee with a single hinge knee below. So that means that gives you about 90 degrees bend. And that also lets you swing his leg outwards as well as inwards. On his lower legs, he's also got a cut just above the boot, and that's quite well designed, so you can spin his lower leg outwards as well as inwards. And finally, on his ankles, he's got ankle tilt upwards, quite a good range, as well as downwards. And lastly, ankle pivot that goes outwards as well as inwards. The design and nature of this character means that you don't really need to get him into two dynamic poses in order for him to look cool in your shelf. Cat Bane comes with thrusters on his boots, so articulation is definitely appreciated to get him into more dynamic flight and fighting poses. However, it's quite a bummer that he doesn't get much forward bend in that waist joint, and that means without that forward bend, his torso looks quite stiff when you get him into deeper action poses. So now I'm gonna try to modify this figure to get more forward bend in his waist ball joint. The ball is probably on that waist piece with the socket in his upper torso. So bending his torso all the way back, I just want to mark out where I shouldn't exceed removing the material on that torso piece so that when I bend the figure backwards, I wouldn't see any disruption of the sculpt from that ball joint. So after applying a bit of heat to that torso, I'm able to pull it apart. And that mark is over here, so we should be removing a little bit of material from the front in order to get him to bend forward more. You can use a grinding tool or a dremel to remove plastic, and always be sure to be safe by wearing protection for your eyes. And now we're taking a look at his torso after I have grinded off some plastic material from the front. This is about how much that I needed to remove in order to get more forward bend. Just make sure that you also remove material on that inner ring as well. And after applying some heat to the upper torso and putting the figure back together again. And now trying out the forward bend and he definitely has quite a bit of improvement. This is how far he can bend forward. And let's have a quick look at his back. There's also no disruption of the sculpt from the back. You don't see the exposed ball joint at all. And now bending him back all the way. There's also no exposure of that ball joint from the front. So I've managed to improve the articulation without sacrificing any little bit of the sculpt. So now he gets more range in that forward bend and looks less stiff in wider action stances. And that improved forward torso range can also improve his posability in his flight poses as well. Size-wise, Cat Bane stands at six and an eighth of an inch and that's 15 and a half centimeters for size comparisons here he is with the bad batch omega and captain rex with boba fett and mando and grogu and the clone trooper 2.0 and storm trooper 2.0 for comparisons with other lines here he is with some gi joe classified series and here he is with some marvel legends with this Amazon exclusive coming in at a higher price point, I was hoping the quality would be up to scratch and this doesn't disappoint. I think the chest plate looks a little bit bland, the forward torso band is extremely limited, and he should have come with more accessories like a new Toto droid. But Cat Bane comes with a lot of new sculpted parts and sharp paint applications, so this figure should stand out as a distinct representation of the unscrupulous bounty hunter in your collection. As a fan of the Bad Batch series, I can recommend this figure and certainly try out the torso mod to make this figure more fun to play with. Please like and share this video, let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to my channel for more toy reviews. Thanks for watching, take care and stay safe.